back one more time. I'm gonna have a few more games for you. A third of the day is now through. We have two more Erangels coming up though, Falix. And the first oh, yes. one has been uh, more of what we've seen so far. It's been Bahrain today, really. Yeah, it's been Bahrain today, as you said. Um, more of what we've seen so far. First game, I want to say not really an indication of how strong they were going to play today. But then the second one really was. They, they fought themselves through lots of hardships um, throughout the entirety of the game, really. Um, they were on the northern side and had to fight not only one but two teams. Turkmenistan was one of them that really had to give it all. At one point, they were down two, maybe three players, and they got all of the players back up, won the fight. So good stuff coming out from Bahrain. Then the breach, obviously, against some of these players towards the western side. That was not an easy um, yeah. gap to bridge, as I said, inside the game. So good, good, good stuff. Every, honestly, everything that we've seen in the first group stage day so far, at least in the second game, has come true again. So I'm excited to see them. Yeah, and I, I think I mentioned it as well during the game. It's exactly how you want to be playing if you feel like you're better than most of the teams, right? They yeah. take isolated fights. They scout their way on in very slowly on the edge. Um, we saw them drive into a bit of a trap around that plane crash area, but they they played very carefully. And I think we even saw it in the kill feed where they got knocked, but they traded each other out yeah. and instantly made sure they were back up to, to full strength. So... Um, Solid, super solid stuff from them, super consistent. The only sort of question mark for me was when I think it was Frieza just sent it in the buggy and, and went on a bit of a, a lone mission in between multiple players. They might have been a bit miscommunication, might have been a small individual yeah. mistake, you never know. But that's essentially what cost them the game there in the end. And uh, it's the same thing as in game one, really, right? Losing one member in a position that where you, where you could have kept your strength up um, is what keeps them from being absolutely insane right now. They're performing really well, but they could mm. even elevate it further, which is a scary prospect for everybody else in the lobby because what do yeah. you do if Bahrain stops making mistakes? <laughs> yeah, also, uh, the, the the biggest, I guess, surprise so far is Mongolia. And and you said about making mistakes. I felt like they just did a big mistake, if not the biggest mistake uh, in the entirety of the tournament so far, at least on Mongolia's side. Them not winning that 4v3 team fight despite them knowing where the players are and also you know being that grouped up together and still not going as a as a, as a full four man formation is is really surprising to me it's something we haven't really seen so far if they do fight they fight really well together and even just before that fight originally happened they had that one solo inside their house and alex cleared them perfectly so why does it work there and then the next fight over it doesn't anymore so i'm, I'm I've, yeah i was really 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 surprised to see mongolia have that big of a problem it felt like they just walked into a barrage of nades there, right? It, it's it's a hard building to clear on out, but they also gave very little respect to Uzbekistan in that moment. Like you said, maybe they thought there were less players in there. Maybe mm -hmm. they thought they were dealing with a duo instead of a three-man. Um, maybe they didn't account for the fact that the res has already come on through. So somehow they underestimated that fight a little bit, and it fell apart um, just there in that moment. And then it's also... As soon as that fight devolves into chaos, right? There's no more control. Somebody's on the outside at the bottom. Somebody's on the top floor alone. Um, mm. A lot of things can go wrong. And a lot of things could have maybe gone right if they were a little bit lucky and they could have won their 1v1s and then we would we would have been sitting here saying, oh my god, Mongolia, <laughs> so clean once again, you know? Um, but the things that could go wrong went wrong and uh, it hurt them in this game. And it, like I said earlier, it puts the pressure on now. Because now we have a two-way fight for second place. Yeah, that fight really changed the outcome of the entirety of the game and also maybe potentially of the tournament. Because not only was it against a team that at that point at least still had a very good chance and still does, but also that gave Kazakhstan and Bahrain the opportunity to, to you know, kick them out. Because Bahrain did have a good game. Again, on Mongolia for the second time was under their expectations. I think very, 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 very hardly under their expectations, right? So um, seven to six points, you can see it right here. They're dropping out of qualification spots and Kazakhstan does move in. They're taking the chances that Mongolia is kind of throwing away. And honestly, Mongolia, imagine they win that fight. With the circle that we've had, the chance for them to win that game? I mean, they're, I, I want to say north of 70%. They would have to literally clear out a solo and maybe a duo for them to get into an, an absolute prime spot to win this. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Mongolia kind of threw away that game with that fight. A little bit, for sure. And like we said, right, it's becoming a two-horse race now. It's opening the door for maybe even Jordan to close the gap onto them. Palestine, we've seen some promising moves from them. Tajikistan with that win. 
Um, the more the more you slip up, the more you give other teams a chance to close the gaps, and um, it's it can easily become a a bit of a slippery slope when you start realizing, oh goddamn, we're we're sliding down the leaderboard, things are not going well. Everybody else is catching up. Everybody else is racking up the points. So, um, they need to bounce back, and Kazakhstan is going to do their very best to keep that from happening, right? Yeah, totally. I am so interested now to see this next map. I want to see Jordan and Palestine maybe get a win. I want to see Tajikistan maybe even follow it up. If that happens, you would literally have five, six competitors in a nine-team lobby. That would be crazy. I, I want to say that is as good as it gets for for a, for a you know nine-team lobby, originally a ten-team lobby. So um, that's what I'm praying for at the moment. Obviously, I think everyone would deserve it at this point. That's in the top four, top six, maybe even top seven. Yeah. All these teams have shown us that they're capable of doing so. But also, there's only one team outside of Mongolia that is taking two chicken dinners so far. And I want to talk about this as well. It, it is Tajikistan. Now, do we have to overanalyze this? I don't think so just yet. I, I don't think yeah. that necessarily means they are better closing out the games. But then again, you can't argue with the success, can you? It, you can argue both ways. That's the thing. You can say, well, they're better at winning games. Or you can say, well, maybe they got a little bit fed and they got a little bit lucky, right? And that's how they got two chicken dinners. So whichever way you want to spin this, you could. Um, but what is really interesting to me is that Tajikistan has one less game than everybody else on that leaderboard, right? So that's something you have to mention. That's something you have to give them credit for is um, they are over... Um, uh, they're over the average that uh, the teams around them are getting. It's just they had one less chance. So... And maybe the more the more games you play, the more even that gets, and uh, there's a chance that they are a little bit underrated right now. Yeah, underrated, I guess, is a good word. Uh, let's head over to predictions before we get into this final game uh, that we have right in front of us. I, I say final game, obviously, it's not the final game, but at least one of the final Wrangle games, one of the last two. Um, any predictions? Because as of right now, I know we set predictions yesterday, but things can change so, so very fast. So at least give me a prediction for the next game, because I said that Kazakhstan was going to have a good day, and so far they do. Anything else that maybe you have in mind? Any other team that's been on your radar? I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to say it's just between Mongolia and Kazakhstan. I don't think anybody else is going to mess with that second place. I think it's those two. And I think they seem better than everybody else in that leaderboard right now, except for Bahrain, of course. Um, so I think it's Bahrain, Mongolia, and Kazakhstan, and we're going to send two of those teams to the Esports World Championship. Interesting, interesting. It, it does feel that way when, when looking at them, but then also I wasn't sure if Kazakhstan was going to be one of them after the first six game. That has just now come through. Um, just based off of, off of how they played, I thought they would be way... I said that after the first day as well. I, I thought they would be way worse off in a total leaderboard situation because they have not let me let me let me get let me check this actually because i thought they did not have a single top four finish outside one single game in the first day and they were still in fourth place in mm -hmm. reach for the second place yes they only had a single second place a single position inside the top four in the first six games and they still got 50 points if that doesn't go to yeah. show you how st strong of fraggers they are and and, and maybe how underperforming they, they have been so far, then, then I don't know what does. So I'm, I'm glad to see Kazakhstan coming back to strength. And yes, honestly, I might agree with your prediction. They're scrappy. They take fights. They take a lot of fights. And they don't always go cleanly. And uh, that's been working out for them this game. That's been working for that them. That's been working for them especially well on the Sanok. But think about the Sanok as well. The risks they were taking with that 4v4 in the blue, they could have gone up with one or two points that game. They end up with a big win that bombards them up the standings. The same thing is true for that early fight they were taking on Erangel, where um, they were basically one DBS shot away from getting wiped in phase one, right? We, we, we talked about that crash around the cube area. I think it was Jordan flexing out um, of the cube compound. A, a little bit goes right with that nade he throws, something goes right with the DBS he's using, and suddenly Kazakhstan has a terrible game. So they're taking a lot of risks, and uh, I think that's probably why we don't see them so much in the top four, um, but they are getting the eliminations to equalize that. And it's a risky play style, but it can be a very consistent one, because it's just more consistent to get kill points every game than to try and get into the top four. Sometimes the circles will just not allow that. Yeah. Question only is, and that's always the question of SO12 qualifier, what, what are you up for? I think that's where the IGL really comes into play, and 
he's going to have to adapt on on each specific circle when 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 what kind of play style is more applicable so i have to wait and see but rain though in perfect and prime position we haven't really seen a military ending so far in any of the group stage days which makes this all the more interesting i want to say yeah but if i if i if, if i were a gambling man i'd put my money on the rain with just for this circle alone that's that's massive also more teams running in. It's so interesting how fast these teams are adapting now towards this circle. We have... Is that a machete in his in his hands? And I think he's facing off a DBS. I could not imagine a worse scenario right now for Jordan. As Miracle goes down. DBS in hand. Hard boy. It's going to clean that up. No problem. No problem at all. Very, very early crosses coming out of Jordan. But Rain again. Fraser taking a whole lot of risks getting involved there as his team is fighting on the other side and they're fighting kazakhstan that might be on the bridge that might be them holding kazakhstan out from even crossing uh, the bridge crossing the river but it's carnage on both sides of the bridges Felix. that's uzbekistan getting themselves the yeah. second and that's jordan i think on the on the receiving end of this so uh, lots of lots of casualties on both bridges lots and lots of casualties ah oh, boy Rotating off now with the two frags they've gathered. Taphook with one and Hardboy with the other one. So at least for them it is a good start. And look at this, they're chasing him. Um, I'm, I'm saying rotating off, but of course they're chasing him. Didn't even realize that Lath was this far gone already. I thought he was just driving anywhere. And yeah, by the looks of it, I think uh, this is going to be a pretty good chase. This is going to be a pretty good chase. Lath has no chance anymore. Lath just drives down the coastline. <laughs> Tries to escape into the water. But let's be honest, he's not safe there either. I don't think there's going to be a chance for him to survive this. I think Lath at this point, depending on how, how long they will chase him. But I think, yeah, Lath, Lath is just not going to make it. Uh, he's he's just not going to. Yeah, I mean, oh. he's, yeah. Oh, he's be careful. Yes, be careful. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to fall down. No, I think he has it under control there. But man, that's not a start you want if you're Jordan, huh? That's not fun times. He's trying to swim away now. No. He was sitting in that buggy for quite a while. His teammates on the far other side um, of the Uzbekistan player. So maybe he's just sacrificing himself at this point. But um, yeah, not looking good for him. Looking good on the other side for Bahrain, who's already found an entry to the team as closest on their heels. Kazakhstan lose one crossing that bridge, putting themselves in a good position, though you can see it on the map, the blue little dots. That's Kazakhstan occupying the north side of military base, while Bahrain is splitting both military base and the crossroads towards Nova Rebnoy. Yeah. So many teams. Once again, I'm really surprised to see so many teams have already crossed towards the military base. Uh I'm, yeah, I'm really surprised. So many teams straight up adapting as fast as they can. Which I like. They know there's less competition now with how few teams are playing in this lobby. And to uh, reiterate this, I'm once again really surprised that somehow Leith has made it. <laughs> made it. He's, he's, he's still alive. I have no, no idea how that happens. I, I thought it was going to be a straight up suicide move just driving down the coast. But... Yeah, I've, if, if I realized if he was just on back on the back of his body and he drove down, he was gonna start his position in the water at a very high depth, a very low depth. So I think that kind of saved him because I realized, mm. wait, I'm gonna have to wait a long time for him to actually come back up to the water. And at this point, they don't even know where he is anymore, and they think that's what happened. So yeah, good good stuff from Jordan, salvaging what they can. Salvaging what they. <clears throat> salvaging jesus hard word apparently <laughs> salvaging what they can after a, a really rough rough start for sure they they go for an early rotate there and they don't anticipate a team beating them and um, so far to it Uzbekistan early on the trigger there on that rotate get themselves a nice little two-point injection and we're starting to get to the part of the tournament where it's 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 a heartbreak losing two players so early it's just eliminating your chances one by one uh, to make something happen, to make the dream happen and go to the World Esports Championship. And, uh, yeah, it's... At least, you, at least, right, they still have two players up. At least we saw that that buggy play into the water. At least they have something to watch. They can spectate their teammates. They can try and strategize for the rest of the game. At least they don't have to sit there with their fingers crossed um, all four eliminated and wait for the next match to start. That's going to help a little bit with keeping the mental up.
I think so. I think that is a good chance. I think this is a reasonable play to make because they have so much time, right? They have they have some of the most priority positions already. Um, but we'll we'll have to wait and see if it pays off. I think it's a reasonable gamble, especially when you consider that Bahrain, they're at a point of the tournament now where a few points per game is, is pretty much enough, right? 20 point gap to the team behind them. That means that every single game, the teams behind them would have to catch up five points. That's not easy when Bahrain gets themselves three, four, five points um, every single game, right? So um, them going for scraps, going for small fights, going for easy kills absolutely makes sense at this point because they don't have to pull off big wins anymore. Oh. It's a big one as well. That completely tears apart the formation of the enemy team. You can see Klaus is already getting the hell out of there. He realizes this is a lost battle. We don't even want to be in this anymore. Now, another chase coming out from Uzbekistan. We've seen this one before, Falix. They are looking to close this one out. Palestine, on the other hand, they have found opposition in Rozok. And it's Golden who gets punished on the other side. It's not a clean fight for either of these two teams right now, Felix. There's a DBS. There's a DBS coming around the corner, finds one, gets traded out in the process, though it's not going to work out this time. He's found two knocks again, and that's why you have to be so careful. We're sitting here all day, Felix, talking about how easy it is to mess these things up. That was close again. They play it well. They're close together. They're ready to trade each other out, but just one small misstep, just maybe one player hitting a tree, one player flipping his car. And all of a sudden, you're looking at losing two members here. So it worked out for Uzbekistan. They, they executed it well. But these crazy plays, these offensive breaches are so, so risky. Excited to see how these teams will handle it. Lots that... of space in the middle of the circle. Plenty of space, but plenty of space that's also overlooked by Bahrain, right? From the high ground, from the observatory tower. So not the easiest uh, circle to be positioning yourself in. Kazakhstan, they decide to go for a southern swing. We saw them on the north central side earlier on in the game, but they have repositioned completely to the south, and then Mongolia is coming in very close. We're going to see start to see a lot of face-offs here, Felix, between our top teams. Bahrain is still holding down that bridge. Uh, we weren't sure if it was going to net them something. It's not looking um, like it will so far, but at least the drop is coming down. And this is the position I was talking about, the high ground that's given them an insane amount of information. But there's the bridge camp coming in. There's Palestine. I haven't seen them on the map, but there they are. First one for Freezer. A bit of retaliation shots coming out, but he's looking to go for the second. He has teammates supporting him as well. It's not looking good right now for Palestine. Lots of damage coming in, but so far only one confirm here on the side yeah. of Bahrain. At least that's going to be an easy one. 
Uh, it's going to be picked up by Bahrain. Really, really surprising to me that Palestine wasn't able to spot out any of the Bahrain players on the other side. I, I thought they were surely going to scout this a little bit more than what than you know what they ultimately did. And just like that, that's one more chance out. And not going to have another feet. one as easily. And with 62 points, you really need that. You needed a good round now to catch up to Kazakhstan. Mongolia has fallen again. And Mongolia is getting torn apart by two teams at the same time. I saw Kazakhstan not coming in there. And then they're also finding a full team in their compound. Palestine looking to find a home. The DBS is ringing through again. He can't connect. That's him out in... Not sure what placement that was, but not a whole lot of kill points for Palestine. And there's Alex going out as well. I think, is that the entirety of Mongolia going out? Uh, I, th I think it might be. I think it might be. Yes, Mongolia's eliminated. Zero points and zero eliminations also. That is uh, that is disastrous right now. Mongolia with a third bad game in a row. They just cannot catch a footing in the second day of the group stage. And only three more chances left. Mongolia is in shambles at the moment, if I may say so. The current reigning PUBG Mobile Global Champions representing that nation have not been in the best of conditions today. Let's see if Uzbekistan in the meanwhile can close the gap on the leaderboard. They have the opportunity to do so now, but Lebanon is shooting things back and Zakaria, we've been missing him for so very long, is giving us a sign of life. Sign of life for Lebanon. Maybe not giving a whole lot of cares anymore, realizing that they have to change up things massively. If they want to stay in this, Uzbekistan, they take another casualty, another knock coming the way of Lebanon. It's not looking good for the team that was chasing opponents in cars just a few minutes ago. Now, hard boy, DBS versus Kazakhstan. He's completely surrounded. This should not be working out, but he's one HP behind the car. Gets the flush as well. And oh boy, Kazakhstan. Once again, they falter at the hands of a DBS. The risk they're taking, they've been paying off on average, but right now, that's a big, big scalp to take here. Two players out of Kazakhstan and Bahrain is instantly there. They smell this. They know this, Falix. They don't want to let this happen. They know the competition is here. Yeah, they know. Especially Psyx, who's been <laughs> the most dangerous candidate for them, is, 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 is one they, they really want to take out. And you can tell they know where he is. It's just a matter of time now. But though, turns around just when he was going to throw the neck, they could have potentially ended his life. But nope, Six is going to stand strong for at least a couple more minutes. He's now getting into the vehicle. He's still got the smoke to cover him, potentially. Yeah, part is rotating off as well. So there's the chance now, though. Oh, look at this. Good tires. rotation coming in from y for YOD. And yes, as you said, the car is already in shambles. And that's going to give him the opportunity to pick up that frag. That's so important right now because Kazakhstan goes down. And Bahrain is still keeping on absolutely fragging out this lobby. I don't think there's a way for them to stop it. I don't think there's a way for anyone to stop this lineup. Oh my god, this is this is Bahrain qualifying right there and then. This is Bahrain realizing it's Kazakhstan right below them, realizing that this is not something that they want to miss up on. And you can see as well, as soon as Kazakhstan is out, they're pulling away from this position. They're realizing this is too dicey, but they wanted to eliminate the close competition. And I think they've just punched in their ticket now. It really is a fight for second place. Free pod around the corner. DBSs are ringing out, but... Lebanon, they have found their footing, finally, in the first game that I've seen so far. Lebanon has found their footing, they're getting the eliminations, they're picking them up piece by piece, and they're taking a little bit of space for themselves. Yeah, so, so important that space. And I'm not sure if it is too late already, but just, just for their own confidence, for their own, you know, also their fun in playing. That game is so massively important. Another frag, and it is against the reigning champions, at least in... Total leaderboard at the moment. Against Bahrain. And they will pick it up. Bahrain does decide to increase the distance. I thought they were going to fight this, but no, Bahrain, they know. But they have a better chance of gathering more points if they rotate around, maybe take the top of the hill again. But little do they know, Lebanon is split quite far, and I believe it is Sakaria. Is already close to the hillside. Yeah, but he just rotated off, so Frieza kind of pressured him away. Good chances still for Bahrain. They've still got the high ground towards the northern side, and look who's coming in. 
Pressure's coming in as well. That's a oh. fly by Zakaria. <laughs> comes over the top. And wow. They're not messing around. Like I said, not giving any cares in the world anymore, but they're versing a shotgun. This is an explosive game they're playing, but it works out in the end. Frizzer are surrounded, outmanned, outgunned. It's not going to be a win for Bahrain from this one. They're getting panned as well at this point. There's a lot of frustration that Lebanon is just unleashing right now. Seven eliminations for them this game is... Pretty much one of the best performances they've had, and uh, they are happy about it right now. But Rain's done their job this game, and now they're getting the shorter end of the stick, trying to disengage, trying to do whatever they can to get a few more placement points, maybe stay in this, because the team next to them knows that they are weakened, and the team next to them in Lebanon wants to close them out. Yeah. And it would be the right decision to do so. Neil's couple more shots towards each other. Be reminded, it's only four teams left alive, and Lebanon is not one of the top contenders right now, so I'm not even sure if that would be the team to focus too much on right now, because honestly, even with this win, they would need another one easily with the same amount of frags to even have a chance of coming back, and it, it just doesn't look like it right now. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the, that's the point in time where, you know, we realize it's the start of a miraculous comeback, but at least as of as of right now, we can't really expect it to happen. So no. yeah, Lebanon, despite despite that brilliant performance right now, and even if they take all of the frags, it's probably still not going to be in contention. That's the, that's the crazy sad part about it. Such a talented roster, and they just haven't picked it up. Jordan, though, on the other hand, they still do have that chance. So a second place, at the very least, is what they need. Jordan and Uzbekistan. Two teams very, very close on the leaderboard. They both need every single point they can get, and they still are in contention, but they have to just spot a mistake here. They have to work together. You see these two solos and the duo. They basically need to team up here and figure out a way to not hurt each other too much, because the more you hurt each other, the more Lebanon is going to run away with this game, and the less points are left for you. So both of these teams, Jordan and Uzbekistan, they still have a fair chance of this, especially at the second place. So they would love to get away with a win here, but right now, Lebanon, they're looking mighty good. They're looking mighty confident. Yeah, they are. <laughs> That's the first time we've seen them this way. But yes, they are. Let's see if it is enough to pick up all of the frags. I think that's also the second necessity that they need. Pick up all of the frags that you have remaining, which would be, uh, I wanted to say five, now four players. And they just spotted the first one. You can see Chazin is rotating around, looking for them quite actively. So is Gringo now. He's just found himself an odd air drop to top things off. But the worst case would be now if the rest of the players do eliminate themselves. And it looks like Clever is going to do just that. I think he knows exactly where Rain is coming from. That's the teammate. That's Light spotting him from a far second pickup for... A Jordan squad, big scalp to claim, and a stop to the Bahrain miracle run of today. There's another few shots, and look at that. Chassan pops them down. They know it's at least, at least it will play a knocked, maybe two of them. Instant pre nade coming out as well. He doesn't even start the res, he's just trying to get the pre nade out. He might do a good bunch of damage with that. He does. The DBS is in hand, and he misses the first two. That's crucial. That's an easy opening, and Lebanon will sell it. One, two, thank you. Pick them up. Pick them up both. And now all they have to find is an Uzbekistan solo to get themselves a 10 placement points. Yeah, and you can you can tell they <laughs> they really want to find him. They really want to make sure he's not dying to the zone. I think for Uzbekistan, they don't have any reason now to deny this point. I think he can easily face them. He he knows it's Lebanon at the moment. They have no chance of of qualifying and they're not in direct competition so even if he only gets one single flush which is still very realistic that would already be worth it so just go for the absolute maximum you do not need to deny him. and i think you can tell he, he's not thinking of doing it either no oh, that's not even on the cards at this point maximize your own points hope hope that mongolia and kazakhstan keep faltering that's really the only recipe to success here because the gap is there the gap exists and uh, it might not be in your hands anymore at this point. You might you might want to maximize your performance, but you also have to realize that um, there's a lot of teams in front of you that can try and gatekeep these positions away from you. Lebanon, 
They're not sitting pretty, they're not waiting this out, they're looking very actively for the last solo, which is what gives them a chance here. Bit of dancing going on as well, bit of having fun. But that's giving Uzbekistan a chance <laughs> to at least get one of the flashes here, I think. Yeah. I think he's, uh, he must have been spotted just there. Surely. He must have been, been, he must have been. There's no way Chesson didn't spot him. I think he no. has. No, no way Tring Gringo gets out of the car there if he hasn't spotted him, right? Oh, boy. That would be crazy. That would be absolutely crazy. Yeah, but is it as crazy as riding a lion? Obviously not, yeah. Oh. I'll shut up. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> They're having some fun cool with it. Segment, I love yeah. to see it. Lebanon is having some fun with it. They finally picked up a good game. And now they're waiting things out. They don't want to overstep. He must have not seen him. Clearly. Clearly hasn't seen him. Uh, so now Zachariah. He's put up four frags this game alone. Nine for the whole of Lebanon. And that makes ten. Oh. Chassan picks up the win for Lebanon. That is an anticlimactic finish if I've ever seen one. But then again, it is a team that we haven't had on the cards at all. And that makes it all the more interesting. Lebanon coming back with 20 points in match number nine. Ladies and gentlemen, it is one of the last Aaron goals we were going to have in Group A. So, it, what we said it during the game. Is it going to change too much? We'll have to wait and see for the overall leaderboard. But at least it's a sign of life from Lebanon. Something that we've been missing throughout the entirety of this tournament. And for any Lebanon fan out there, and for, for us as well, we've been waiting for the roster to, to pick it up. At least that's going to be uh, interesting to watch. And, and, and honestly, just a good sight. I, I like these guys. This is why you stick around. Even if your team is not doing well, you might want to miss the highlights uh, if, you're, if you're actually tuning out too early. 20 points for Lebanon is a nice injection, like we said, right? There's... A lot more to come if they're going to be a contender. But they have yep. picked up a lot of frags this game. They have picked up a lot of points this game. And uh, they have proven to be a big obstacle for some of the big teams in the lobby. They basically single-handedly dismantled Bahrain fellas. Yeah, uh, that, that's actually, we haven't really talked about this too much just yet. The way Bahrain... The way Bahrain thought they had the control of the zone until Lebanon came was, was, was quite interesting. They thought they had everything under control, and then Lebanon came. And the, the one team that we didn't expect anymore at all to pick up the pace destroys them and also clears out everyone else. So that wasn't just a fluke. Lebanon genuinely was better than everyone else on that edge. Um, they, they were fighting it better. They had more control. They were also playing it very risky, which obviously, understandably, with a leaderboard situation, they can and have to. But um, yeah, it's just so surprising because we haven't seen that at all from them. Um, so yeah, crazy stuff coming out from them. Uzbekistan, we have to talk about them as well. They will secure themselves a couple of good points. But also, it's do or die for them in the next yeah. couple of games. They need to pick up a win because everyone else is continuously doing points. And as of right now, with Bahrain having a good game again, it's really going to come down to, as you said, to that second spot. Who's going to get that second 100%. spot? But, 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 but right, it's, just, it's just not to be stopped. They've literally had every single game... Um, they literally had a good game almost every single game of the tournament. So, yeah, it's, it's not supposed to stop. And, like, yeah, it's a 100% fight for second place. And that makes it a little bit simpler. That makes it a little bit easier to think about. But uh, Lebanon did what they could this game. And they put up the numbers to push them a little bit closer. Not the best game for Gringo, apparently. I'm not sure if those stats are bugged or if he just actually couldn't really get anything going. But uh, he, he was there. He was there, you know. He was, he was winning with the team. Um... But yeah, we will see once the standings come up. We will see that this was another banger for Bahrain. And not only that, but they made sure that both Kazakhstan and Mongolia had bad games respectively. And that's what, what you're going to see on these match standings once they come up. It's Sure, it's Lebanon that, that's running the show. But look at Mongolia with two. Look at Kazakhstan with five. And then Bahrain is just extending that gap more and more and more. 20 points. Where was, where was that Lebanon? And we've been missing them for so so long where was that lebanon the first day uh it's just i don't know just just really really weird sight to see them now pick up as many points as they essentially had throughout the entirety of the tournament they started today with yeah. 12 points just to give you guys an idea on how how strange that is they started there with 12 <laughs> points i'm not even sure if they had 20 points before no. this game they had 18 points before this game that's the they, crazy they part more than it. doubled their points with this yeah. single game and that is so, so weird. If you look at their roster, we have players from Heroics in there. These guys aren't bad by any standard. They should be way higher up. They were one of the teams that I said we should we should take a focus at. Like we should we should we should look at before the tournament even started. And 
to see them now just barely scratching that seventh, sixth place, maybe, is... I don't know, it's weird. Well, maybe they can save some mana, maybe they can come back a little bit today. A team that's definitely come back a little bit is Uzbekistan, who put up a big number of frags this game, and I think might have pushed themselves all the way up to fourth place here with those 14 points. So they're the ones that might uh, make me eat my words, you know? I was saying it's just Bahrain, Mongolia, and Kazakhstan. Maybe Uzbekistan is the one to prove me wrong. They put up a really good performance in this one, and if they continue on their path, then they have a good chance for today. So. They're one of the teams where we don't have to imagine miracles uh, for them to qualify. We just have to imagine them performing um, a little bit over average. Match summary, 44 smokes and nades. It's not a whole lot here, Felix. Why do you think that happened? Yeah. <laughs> Why do I think that happened? Early skirmishes and also a crazy zone. So I'm not, I'm not so surprised. Um, not a lot of teams also rotating on, on, on vehicles. Um, or at least a lot of teams rotating vehicles, but not a lot of teams rotating on vehicles right next to each other so i'm not surprised to see almost no one being taken out of vehicles match summary let's take a look at some of these most important categories it is indeed lebanon but also it is uzbekistan and that's maybe even more surprising to me because i thought most damage that was surely going to be someone from from lebanon it isn't though it is uzbekistan who's had the highest damage between the players and um well to be fair they did have relatively lengthy fights so Maybe that's where it comes from. Let's take a look at the match MVP, though. Chassan, five elims. We saw him pick up the last one there, driving around in his car. All his teammates were busy dancing. Um, picks up the last one, five kills for himself. Uh, and an easy three headshots to boot. Again, beautiful game from Lebanon. Where was that for the whole rest of the tournament? For the previous eight games, we have not seen that. But who knows? Maybe they can come back. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not biting. Um, I'm not biting my. Uh, I'm not sure how the saying goes, actually. I'm not waiting for it because we'll have yeah. to wait and see. <laughs> but um, <laughs> five kills for him. Whole lot of damage to boot. Outperforming hard boy from Uzbekistan. And that's considering that Uzbekistan started fragging a whole lot earlier. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Hard boy, though. Time and time again, especially for the Uzbekistan roster. One of the most important fraggers. And at this point, shout out to all the Uzbekistan fans in the chat. We've got plenty of you guys today. Um, absolute massive PUBG Mobile region as well. And I, I think, I think, fan, at least fan wise, I think Uzbekistan has probably got some of the most, some of the biggest support in the chat. And I also think that's maybe what in the end can make the difference between qualifying and not qualifying. You know, if you do have the support, if you know you have hundreds of people cheering you on. Maybe that gives you extra amount of boosts in that late stretch of the tournament, which is what we're going into right now. The last three matches are coming up, do be reminded. Last three matches coming up as we have a bit of a runner-up situation on the leaderboard, I think. We're going to head over to the overall standings. And we're going to probably see that I think... Oh, just not enough. All right, Jordan stays in fourth, just barely. Um, but it is now Mongolia, Jordan, Uzbekistan who are hunting that second place. Kazakhstan able to separate themselves just barely. Five points ahead of third is not a whole lot, Felix. Yeah, not a whole lot, no. Um, what is a whole lot is Bahrain and Mongolia, the difference between them. It's, yeah. yeah. We, we said it was going to be almost impossible to catch them. At this point, it is. Uh, it's almost mathematically impo impossible. So, not surprised... Not surprising that the slightest to see Bahrain already securing the qualification. Kazakhstan now 83, and you said it was not going to be a big difference. Yeah, six points. Uh, excuse me, five points. Easily achievable. Same goes for Jordan and Uzbekistan. I thought Uzbekistan was going to be above Jordan now, to be honest, because Jordan had two relatively lackluster games today. But apparently it's going to be enough for 71 points. So also, same goes for them. 12 points only being the difference. So all in all, uh, we still have like five teams. Yeah. with a chance for qualification i think five is a good is a good uh is a good number maybe palestine even i probably closed the gap after that but um with three games left uh, it's it's still entirely possible it's getting harder and harder but we're keeping it interesting especially mongolia i feel like is keeping it interesting by really really falling off today and then whoever can fill that gap may it be jordan may it be uzbekistan um, might be the team we're looking out for but right yeah. now kazakhstan has outperformed today not the, not the flashiest game three from them, but so far overall across the day they've outperformed. They've put themselves in the spot and they are now the team to beat. 
we will have to take a look at the next three games to really know who's going to qualify. But ladies and gentlemen, we will head into a very short break and we'll be right back for match number four of the day.